Hi, my name is Julia Silge and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, this week's um, screencast is gonna be about our Tidy Tuesday data set, um, which is all the Spice Girls. There's a couple of different data sets. We're gonna focus the one on the lyrics and we are, we're not gonna use Tidy models today. Instead this, instead of doing a, um, a supervised uh, predictive modeling task where we have labels on our observations, instead, we're gonna take an unsupervised approach and talk about um, topic modeling. So topic modeling is an example of an unsupervised machine learning um, approach for text analysis where you take um, you know, a pile of documents, say a collection of Spice Girls songs, and you, um, you use this, um, this algorithm to um, model and learn or discover um, topics, like what, what the songs are about. Let's get started. All right, let's get started on this data set of um, lyrics from the Spice Girls. So this week's Tidy Tuesday has um, several data sets, but I am only going to use the one about the lyrics. So if we take a look at what we have here, we have got, um, got you know, artist name, which of course is, um, uh, all the same, but we've got uh, several albums. There's three different albums here. There are, let's see, um, you know, we could do, we could like look like album name and then song name like this and look at, look at that here. Uh, so we've got 31 songs um, and th this is a pretty, this is a pretty small data set, but we still, are, I think we'll be able to do, um, do a pretty nice job walking through how to train a topic model, an unsupervised um, topic model here and understand what Spice Girls songs are about. I see we've got these issues here with the, um, it's like an encoding issue. So let's, let's fix that when we get started. Um, the first thing I want to do here, um, let me, let's just take a look at this. So this is a data set where we have, um, one line per row, like one line of the song per row. And there is some information on like who is singing, um, a section name, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, um, <clears throat> here. And so um, this text here is in a format where we have um, one line of the song per row. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert to this data set to um, – uh, a data set where I have um, one observation per row where, where the observation is what I'm really interested in. And, and I am interested in words um, as my uh, observational unit that I'm interested in. So I'm going to load the um, tidy text package and then I am going to um, I'm gonna take the lyrics. I'm going to, let's fix that, that those song names. So I'm going to say string replace all song name and what well, it was, let's do this. Um, oh, where'd it go? Here it is. These weirdly encoded, um, um, uh, single quotes or, or, you know, for contractions there. So let's do that. And then let's, um, let's use unnest tokens, which will tokenize and reshape the data at the same time. So let's tokenize from that line, um, the line of the song to a word like that. So this, we, instead of having line, we now have a single word. And then let's, um, let's remove some stop words here. So let's remove a, um, the default, which is a fairly small stop word list there. So let's, let's call this the tidy lyrics data set here. Notice it's got a lot more, um, uh, we've got a lot more rows in our data set now because now it is um, one one word per um, row of our data frame instead of one line per row. So, you know, we've got, um, yo, tell me what you want, what you really, really want here. All right. Um, Okay, so let's do, let's just do like some quick summarization before we get started on our topic model. 
So for example, we can say, what are the, um, the most common words in this, um, in these lyrics after removing that list of soft words. So get, love, no time, wanna, never, oh yeah. So we, so these are these common words here. Um, if we want, we can um, uh, count with more than one argument and find out the songs, um, how many words are used in each song. Um, and this is useful because it can help us understand like how many counts we have per, um, per document or song here. So, you know, we've got like if I, let's see, I'm gonna do this again and view it. And, you know, we, so we're, we're pretty quickly down to like, you know, in the tens here for words like spice and um, eternity and giving. So, so not, th these are not huge numbers of counts per song. So we'll need to keep that in mind as we decide to make a uh, topic model. Speaking of which, it's, let's do it. Okay, so um, a topic model is a, um, <clears throat> a, an unsupervised machine learning method. And as its input, it doesn't want, you know, something that's in a tidy format like this. A tidy format like this is great for exploratory data analysis, for um, manipulation, for visualization. But when it's time to do math, we really need to um, uh, convert this to a uh, to a matrix form. So what we're going to convert this to is a document term matrix, we're gonna, and we're going to do it into a sparse format. Text data is almost always very sparse because we have um, there are some words that we use. There are a few words that we use a lot of times, and a lot of words that we only use a few times. And so that um, is a good fit for sparse uh, data. So let's do actually pretty much just what we did up there. Let's count song word, um, and then let's um, use this, uh, let's cast to a sparse matrix here. Um, so we need, what's it goes in the, we're t piping in the data, and then we need to say what's the row, what's the column, and then what goes into the, um, the, the every matrix element. So this is a document term matrix. So our documents are our songs, our term, so our rows and then um, n those counts are what goes in the um, <clears throat> as the matrix elements there. So let us let's call this lyrics sparse. So no longer do we have tidy lyrics. Now we have sparse lyrics. So uh, it pr doesn't have a very good um, print method, but I can. So if I print it out, it'll just um, well I'll show you so you know. You know it it looks like this. So we have all the dots are um, uh, zeros, but a sparse matrix doesn't keep track of zeros explicitly. It be, it keeps track of um, where the elements are for because uh, because for very sparse data, it's more efficient to keep track of like um, at i j this value I have a one you know versus keeping track of the whole matrix. So we've the rows are the songs and the um, columns are the words, and so this is kind of a not so great printing, but it, it kind of gives you an idea of what it, um, what happens. Um, so uh, like what our dimensions here, so if I look at the dimensions of the sparse matrix, we've got um, 31 rows because we have 31 songs and then we have 979 um, uh, columns because that is how many, um, that's how many words we still have in our data set after, um, after removing soft words. We could, you know, maybe like do a filter on the low end, but um, that might be something we could try to improve the, improve the um, quality of our topic modeling, but let's, it's not a huge number of terms, so let's keep going from here. So now it is time for the topic modeling. So my favorite implementation right now of topic modeling in R is the STM package. So if we load it, um, <clears throat> the main, the main um, modeling function is just called STM. So it, so what a, a topic model um, 
the way it works is it uh, it models um, each document that we have, so each song, as a mixture of topics. Like it could be, say be all topic one, or like a mixture of topic two and topic three, and then it models each topic as a mixture of words. So the words contribute to different amounts to each topic, and the same words can go into different topics. Um, so that that's how <clears throat> a topic model works. So let's, so we've loaded it, let's, let's get this started. So we call that STM function to train this model. The first thing we pass in is our sparse matrix like this. And then the other, like the main, there are, there are a lot of other options here, but they work you know, pretty well in their defaults. So the main other thing we need to find, decide what we want to do is K. <clears throat> So if we scroll down here, scroll, 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 lots of documentation here. Um, I just want to emphasize this. The most important user input in parametric topic models is the number of topics. So this, you can think of it as an analogy uh, to k-means where you don't know ahead of time what the right value for k is. You have to use um, some knowledge about the data set that you have, some knowledge about um, uh, you know, like like how much data or, or whatever it's like to decide this. Um, you have to put it in ahead of time. So there's, you know, there's some, um, you know, some kind of some guidelines here. Um, this is a tiny, tiny data set. So let's just do four topics here. Let's call this the um, the topic model, like that. Um, uh, and I I do have an older blog post that walks through. You know, if you you don't know, like you're you're somewhere in here. Say you've got, you know, like ten thousand documents instead of the thirty, you know, that we have, and you're like, ah, I don't know. Should I, you know, should I be more like fifty or should I be more like a hundred? You, the way to find that is to train topic models at different values, at try them all, and then see which ones have the best um, characteristics, which models have the best characteristics. So let's. This is super tiny, so let's just do it one time. So it's starting. And it's done. So this, I mean, this is so little data that it's like super duper um, fast here. So if you want to get a quick, a quick glance at what um, the topic model is like, like the results that we got, you can call summary on the topic model. So, you know, it tells us some things about it. Yes, we had four topics. We, you know, have this many songs. And this is how many terms, tokens, or words you know, that we have in there. And then it kind of gives us a little bit of like some some insight into our four topics that we have here. You know, the topic one is about um, get, wanna, time, night, right. And topic two is pretty different. It's about dance, generation, um, yeah, um, uh, love, you know, like, so these are, these are like, diff there are different words here. So the summary is good if you have um, <clears throat> just, you just want to do some like quick exploration but, you know, just kind of like a quick glance. But if what you want to do is more detailed exploration, then I think what you want to do is you want to tidy. So there, in a... Um in a topic model, there are two sets of output you can get when you tidy the topic model. Topic model like this. And so <clears throat> uh, basically we're going to get a tidy format of two um, matrices and we have to choose. So if we say tidy matrix equals beta, what this is, is this is the set of topic word probabilities. So for each topic, what is the probability that we get each of these words and these words, you know, like the words that are low, lower here. So let's do this. So let's call this, so this is, um, this is song topic probabilities here. So what we get here is in a tidy format um, for all four topics, each word is going to be here and we're going to see the, um, the probability here. So let's look at baby here. Notice that <clears throat> baby is very low. The probability is very low in topic three pretty low in topic four and not so low in topics one and two. So each topic, each document is modeled as a mixture of topics and each topic is modeled as a mixture of words. <clears throat> and so we, we kind of see that here. So if we want to, um, you know, we can, now that we have this, we can do anything we want with it. Like, um, 
you know, we can compute on it in any way we want. We can find, we can look for any word that we're interested in. We can um, uh, summarize it. We can visualize it. So, for example, let's take um, by topic, let's take the top, the top, um, so this beta, that's the probability, the, um, the topic word probability. Let's take the top 10 for each one of these like this. So now we just have 40. Let's ungroup. And then let us, um, let's change, um, let's do term fact reorder so that it is term beta like that. And uh, topic, let's make that one. I'm getting ready to, to make a visualization, so that's why I'm doing this. Let's like paste so that it's a uh, topic, topic like that here. So topic one and so forth. And so this is a factor now so that we can <clears throat> uh, visualize it the way that we want. And then let's pipe that into ggplot. So the aesthetics, we're going to put beta on the x-axis. Um, let's put term on the y-axis. And let's say fill equals topic. And then let's say, let's make this a bar plot. Like so. And let's say facet wrap vars topic, topic, and yeah, I think that's, that's it, right? Ah, okay, so we got to do a scales equals free y. Let's make this better in another couple of way, as ways also. So um, x, we can say expression equals beta like that, and that'll give me the actual Greek beta, which is kind of nice. I think it's pretty obvious. Those are terms, so we don't need to put those there. That looks pretty good. I like that pretty well. Yeah, so that's 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 pretty good. Okay, so we can see here, <clears throat> so the reason why these are in... Um, uh, you know, like not smooth order, but like like wanna love and um, love is here. So that's why these are kind of like not in to totally smooth order. We could instead say, um, um, I think we could say, how would we do this? So instead of doing this, we because there's a there's a, some helpers for visualizing things like this. We can say reorder within. And we're reordering term um, by beta within topic. That's how it goes. And then we need then to say scale um, y reordered like that. So now they're all smooth, um, it, you know, um, which looks a little nicer. Okay, so topic one, get one a time night right. Um, and then down topic four, law, never love, give time no. So we've got these sort of different sets of words that have been learned um, that, that, um, that, that, that go together, you know, like these sets of four topics that are here. So each song is, um, you know, more is a mixture of some of these topics and then each, um, each topic is a mixture of these words here. So let's, um, the, so if we were interested in that, the next thing we want to do is we want to get the other matrix out. So this is um, song, so this is document topic, I'm sorry. So this is, this should be word, I'm sorry, word topics, word topics, word topics, and then this should be song topics, and let's <clears throat> tidy the topic model. And let's say, and the, this matrix is called gamma. <clears throat> and so the gamma probabilities are the, um, the document topic probabilities. And we actually have to give the document names here, row names, the lyrics, sparse for that to work. Or else it won't know the names of the documents because it's not stored inside of the model. <clears throat> All right, so we so now we can look at what that is. So this is for each document and topic, what is the probability of that document being generated from that topic? So it looks like two become one is from topic one here.
So we can make another visualization here. Um, let's, let's see, song topics. How should we do this? So let's, um, let's, let's, um, mute, let's change this. Um, so that document, let's reorder it by, um, uh gamma i think let's do this and then let's make um topic factor topic so i think what this will do is it will reorder so we'll get at one end of our plot we'll get the dot the songs that are more um <clears throat> more all one document because i'm rewarding by the probability and at one end of the plot we'll get the ones that are more um <clears throat> that are more uh, a mix of topics, more a mix of topics. Uh, all right, so let's do this. So, so let's put, um, uh, what do we put on? Let's do like topic gamma fill equals topic geom call like this, and we will facet wrap Vars document like this. So we're going to get a little plot showing how for each song, what, um, <clears throat> what, uh, how much, how much each topic contributes to it. So let's give this a try. Well, that's right, but I think it's a little hard to read like that. Let's do, um, let's switch it. Let's put this one. Let's switch the orientation there. And let's see, what else do we need to say? Let's say labs. So now X will be where the gamma is. And this, I think, is topic. That's me. That might be pretty clear, but I think that'll be helpful. And let's say n call, let's, let's say n call equals four. I think that will be better. Oh, n call. I put it in the wrong place. It goes here. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. <clears throat> I think this is pretty good. This is a little bit um, busy, but you know, uh, this data set is kind of at a good um, breaking point in that we can, um, we can put all the documents on one plot. It's a little busy, but we can look at them. So up in the top, we have the songs that are basically mostly one topic. So, um, you know, and spice up your life, never give up on the good times. Let's see if I can make it so we can see all the, yeah, there you go. Um, these are from the same topic and like Viva Forever, but Saturday Night Divas, uh, Wannabe, Last Time Lover, these are from a different topic. Um, we have um, Paul or Who Do You Think You Are and so forth. So, but if we, as we move down, down to this corner, you know, down to, uh, towards this time, this, this side of the plot, we have the songs that are a mix of topics. And um, so it's, it's possible for, you know, it to be like, Get Down With Me is almost all one topic with tiny bits of other uh, topics or, um, you know, Weekend Love is like, uh, mostly two topics. So this is how a topic model works. You've got documents. They are, um, you model them as a, as a mixture of the topics that you have. And then as we saw before, the topics are made up of words. So that's, um, so that's, uh, that's, that's the results there. There's actually a ton more you can do with topic models. Like, and since we, we can actually like, join back to any metadata we have. So you can explore this in so many ways. Um, one of the ways that um, you can do this is by using estimate, estimate effect. So the way this works is we call that function and um, we, we put in a formula that looks like, um, that looks like this. Where, what, and what we're doing is we are um, going to predict for the topics for basically for the proportion of each document that's about a topic, are they, um, 
uh, can we predict that with some kind of you know, covariate, some kind of metadata. So let's look, what was it called? Album name. So remember, album name didn't go into <clears throat> this model at all. So what we're doing is we're, we're basically asking the question, do the topics in Spice Girls songs change across albums? Like, is there evidence that it's associated with album? Like there are album to album differences in the topics. So this is, this is what we're the, these are the models that we're going to fit. We are going to use, we need to pass in our topic model and then we need to um, pass in some uh, like basically data that has the, this metadata in it so that we can connect the documents to the, um, to the songs. So if we say lyrics, if we say distinct um, album name, song name, I think this should do it. Although the song names are not, no, that won't do it. Um, they're not, they're not right. Let's do it from tidy lyrics. And let's say, um, let's say song name first and then album name, like this, distinct song name, album name. Okay, uh, let, let's, let's remind ourselves. Okay, <clears throat> what we need to send in, the metadata. Okay, where all predictor variables and formula can be found. Okay, yes, all right. That's what we want. Actually, maybe I only need to send in the album, but that needs to be in the same order. Okay, so what is the order of row names, lyrics, sparse, like that? Okay, it's in alphabetical order, which makes sense. So we need to do this, and then we need to arrange by song name, like that. So now this will work like this. So this we can put here. So that's our metadata. So let's call this effects. So this, <clears throat> here are the models we're gonna fit. Um, the proportion of each topic that belong that uh, for each document. Here is the um, the thing we're using as a predictor. The topic model um, it, it needs the topic model model to be able to find out you know that stuff to be able to make the model. And then this is our metadata that we have here. So let's do that. Let's let's go. Ah, oh, and it went so fast, right? So fast. So again, if we want, we can use summary to get a quick glance. And let's look at this. So topic one, huge p-values. Topic two, enormous. Again, again, the intercept is <clears throat> significant, but you know, we, we don't, so that, um, so we're, we're seeing that intercept, but we don't see that these, that we so that we see a change there with the album name. So we're not really seeing that, um, that evidence there. So let's say tidy effects like that. And so we, we can, we can use, if we, so summary is good for taking a look and tidy is good if you want to compute on this. So here, what we have is the, um, you know, the values for all these intercepts. And then we have the values for the terms that we were using. So of the three albums, the first one forever, or I mean, it's not the first one, but the one with the first um, letter in the alphabet will be the first level. And then we're comparing that to that. And we, we see, you know, these very big p-values saying that we don't see evidence here of album to album differences in the um, topics in the Spice Girls lyrics. So to sum up, it seems like the Spice Girls sang about the same topics from album to album. All right, we did it. Um, with larger data sets, of course, it is much more computationally intensive to train these topic models. Um, but uh, they, they're a really great approach when you have text with no labels on it and you have some kind of, um, you want to learn about the semantic content of them, like what are people talking about? What's going on in this text? 
and and you have there are there are many options of things you can do with the model after it is trained. You can um, you know we we talked about looking at uh, metadata associated with the documents and um, using the you know estimate effects like how how are the do there the topics related to the metadata um, you know there there's there's all kinds of other things you can do with the topics afterwards because you know like. Documents are related to topics, topics are related to words, and, and it's super flexible and helpful and is an approach that I have found useful in my real world work. I'm actually slightly too old to have really experienced the peak of um, uh, Spice Girls mania, but um, it was really fun to be able to work on this, um, this project today. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.